I'll pretend I'm scrolling through. My nose is whistling. Can you hear that on the mic? We're rolling. Go for it. This is gonna be edited? Yeah. Okay, so I can swear? Just joking. I know, I'm just joking. What's up guys, my name is Coach Jeremy. And I'm Pavel Barber. And today we're sitting down at the Hockey Shot Center of Excellence and we're answering your questions. So you sent them in through Instagram and Twitter and we will get to as many as possible. You ready? Let's do it. Let's get right into it then. Mark, Marcus so Suomala. Nailed it. I'm gonna say Marcus. We'll call him Marcus. Marcus asks, any idea why many snipers, Line, Ovechkin, etc., only tape their blades from midway to the toe? Jeez, I have no idea. I, I've only done the full blade my entire life, except when I didn't have scissors and I couldn't do the toe. So I've never tried anything else out and I never really looked too much into it, so I have no clue. My guess would be uh, when you're younger, you use a lot more of the blade. As you get more of uh, strength and your technique gets a little bit better, a lot of the pro guys, they only really shoot from the toe. So they don't go heel to toe like a lot of uh, people are taught how to shoot. Uh, they're just pretty much holding that puck right in, in the middle or at the toe, pulling it and snapping it. So maybe it's just because uh, Reduced weight, a little less tape on the <laughs> on the blade. Yeah, probably can't afford a yeah. full tape. That's it. That's it. So we cracked the code, and that's why you don't see the uh, the full blade all the way up to you know what they call it, the sock, the, the tube sock tape job. <laughs> yeah. When you go right up the heel a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's ugly. Helmet. Why are the names so hard? I'll try my best. That's why I said just like. I did. It. I'm doing my best. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, I'm gonna try my best though. Helmet is. No, I won't try that one. We got another question coming in from Ireland. Any tips for growing hockey in a country where it has a tiny community? Uh, I'll pop into that one first. I think what you need to do is just surround yourself with people who love the game. So find the people who do love hockey and just play the game. Uh, people are gonna see you're having fun. You know, play street hockey, play ball hockey, find any place to play. Play, play hockey in the park, play in the rinks, of course. But what's going to happen is from that love of the game, from that small community or the, that small group of people, other people will see it and they'll want in. You know, your friends are going to want to play. The kids that are seeing it will grow up and start playing. And that, that's my advice is just, you know, play wherever you can and uh, try to bring as many people in. Yeah, I think it depends where you are. Obviously, uh, a lot of places where it's not big, you don't have ice at all. Uh, so finding low cost startups like roller hockey or ball hockey or floor ball, broom ball, whatever you want to play. Uh, just just start playing, make it convenient, make it affordable, make it accessible, uh, play with your friends. With technology now you can you can film it, grow it, uh, show it to uh, your friends, ask them if they want to play, start a drop-in league, anything like that helps the game grow. If you have ice, obviously get out there, but uh, I know it can be expensive for uh, places that don't have hockey. And I'll add one more tip at the end, if you do have access to ice, advertise, try hockey for free. Right, bring everybody out because a lot of times all it takes is you know you put the the stick in their hand and they they fall in love with it just going out on the ice once so do something like that um, you know a few times a year try hockey for free get people interested and then you know they might come back and, and sign up for uh, a league or uh, you know fall in love with the game. Okay, next question: What stick handling drill is most effective in quickening your hands? For me, it's it's always a matter of what what tool you're using. Uh, for me, I I think anything lighter is better because it forces you to react faster. A lot of people think speeding up the hands, you wanna use something heavier. Heavier is way easier to handle, you can make more mistakes and your reaction time will be slower with a heavier object because it's moving slower. Anything uh, that is lighter will move faster and force you to react faster. So like the Swedish balls, uh, green biscuits are a little bit lighter so they move quickly as well. Uh, so any objects like that are going to speed up your hands. Secondary question on top of that, how do you feel about the oddly shaped, like the, there's a wooden egg, there's like a reaction ball that has like these little rubber nubs in it anywhere and it's like not predictable. Yeah, I, I've never used it, uh, so I can't speak too much to that. Um, you know, obviously anything that's unpredictable and forcing you to react to it is good. I'm not sure, technically speaking, like getting the right angle of the blade to get on the right side, I don't think that'll help with those, but uh, maybe for uh, hand-eye, coordination or, or reacting to something. Yeah, it's something that can be used as a, a tool, like something's a small part of the training, but yeah. you know, it's not gonna uh, really be your main your main thing you're Definitely. doing. Andre Yuri asks, where were you born? I was born in Toronto, Ontario. And I was born in the hospital. 
Oh, uh, Newmarket, Ontario, and born. <laughs> it was bad. Okay, don't put that. No. Uh, born in Newmarket, and then uh, born and raised in Beaverton, Ontario, small town. Carl Johan says, "Which is your favorite NHL team?" Mine's the Anaheim Ducks. I grew up a huge fan of Paul Crea uh, and Team Muslani, the dynamic duo, and of course I loved the movies and the TV show. They had a great TV show, cartoon series. I did not just tune into the TV show. You missed now. We'll get Mason into it. Uh, my favorite team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Always has been uh, born a Leafs fan, I guess you would say, and I'm pretty excited for where that's going. So, next question. Okay, the next question is a rhetorical question, which is who is the better goalie? I don't even need to say <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that's from Ultimate Hockey Fan Cave. It's obvious. Yeah, I, I can't compete with somebody who is teaching people the most important fundamental parts of goaltending. If you don't, if you're, you want to be a goalie, watch uh, Pavel's videos. There's a lot to learn from those. That's it. Best in the world. Oh, and this one's not good. I'm thinking about quitting hockey. What do you guys think? Do it. <laughs> not for you. I can tell you. Tr you're, try tennis. You're not good. <laughs> We'll actually answer that seriously after this one. Yeah. King Mark 14 says, "What lie do you prefer?" Yeah. King Mark 14 says, "What lie do you prefer for better sticking?" Uh, that's it's it's not an easy question to answer. There's no better lie for better stick handling. The lie determines how high your top hand is going to be and how your blade aligns on the ice. Uh, anything closer to your body, you want a higher lie. Uh, to have more blade on the ice, further away from your body, you want a lower lie. Really depends your stance, what kind of skater you are, do you play in tight to your body, far away from your body. Guys like Patrick Kane, he's using a lie 7. A lot of players using a lie 7 if you're a little bit more upright. Uh, guys who are skating low like Crosby probably have a lie about 4 or 5, something like that. So you got to see what player you are. Lie of 7 helps you with the puck a little closer into the body if you're... Yeah, yeah. absolutely. More blade on the ice basically. So the heel will stay flat, flatter with a lie 7 than a lie 5 would in tight to your body. Don't have to add anything to that. Melon Zach says, I'm thinking about quitting hockey. What do you guys think? Do it. For me, I mean, it all depends on your situation right now. I know with a lot of younger players, they run into that. Um, there's a lot of pressure on them to, you know, make the NHL or become something that other people that people want them to be. And if they don't get to that level, then they just hang them up. And I think that's really unfortunate. Remember why you play. Remember uh, why you love the game. And, you know, use that to continue to play because you can play until you're 60 or 70 years old and you know as long as you do it for fun and you know remove some of that pressure I think that you could continue playing. Yeah I think you gotta break it down to uh, you know do you enjoy it like like anything in life uh, you know if you enjoy it you should do it as often as you can. Uh, what's stopping you from enjoying the game right now is it people telling you you're not good is it your team you don't like your teammates is it a coach you know, because if it's one of those things and you enjoy the game separate from that, then you just, you just got to change your situation. Uh, you know, obviously, if you don't like hockey, don't play hockey. You There's know, lots of the same with other, other thing, right? You don't have to play hockey unless you're Canadian, in which case you do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just uh, look at that. But if you love doing it, find a way to do it uh, because I think the sport offers a lot more. Um, then you think, even if you don't go pro. So many life lessons yeah. that I take away from the game. Yeah. How are you? Good. Me too. Really good. <laughs> Deesh from BTNL says, can you knock down a whole bowl of ping pong balls off the table while the shoot is on? No, but no. you can. It, it takes a true master to be able to do you something like that. You have to like have that. triceps like this yes. big to do that. <laughs> so, you did In, that. Inside joke. We'll send that to him. Fool. Out of this and improve your skills at home. Let's go. Simple or too short? Yeah, oh, yeah, just make all kinds of noise. Why don't you just throw the whole bowl of ping pong ball? Fool. This one is for you. Trevor Morlando says, How can I get silky mitts like Pavel Barber? Well, you got to uh, first have really small hands like me. Hey, you notice my middle fingers curve oddly. You gotta have those, um, and then yeah, that's uh, then you have to have no life and stick handle in your parents' basement for 23 years. Man, that's gross. Uh, yeah, then you'll be halfway there. 
Moisturize yeah. too. Moisturize, yeah. Absolutely. Blake asks, what inspired you to create content that appeals to all ages? I think for me, it was just uh, me wanting to learn things as a kid myself. Uh, and uh, knowing that YouTube was a great platform to spread information. Uh, I had learned a lot about the uh, game of stick handling, just training on my own, and I thought what better way to give back to the game of hockey than to spread that knowledge out to other people, hopefully make them better and make them fall in love with the game a bit more. So that was really uh, what started it all for me. For me, it was just, it came down to things that I loved. I loved hockey, it was always a part of my life. It played a, a big role in my life, and I also liked helping people. And I was coaching at a local level, and I, I saw the things that um, I didn't learn until a little bit later in my you know, playing career. <laughs> uh, these kids also didn't know. And I said, well, there's got to be something online where, where people can learn this. And I started looking, and I couldn't really find anything. So uh, for me, it was pretty much just I wanted to help hockey players. I wanted to create um, things that would make it really easy for anybody who might not have access to uh, a coach. Uh, to be able to just log in and learn um, and not have to you know, try to figure it out themselves or uh, you know, not have access to just the simple tips so they could build the fundamental skills. How is better at hockey? Oh, good for you, How. <laughs> Will there be a sale for passing kids? Will there be a sale for passing kids? Southtown Stars says, how do I get better at lifting the puck on my backhand? And I have seen uh, Pav working on his backhand quite a bit in his uh, videos on Instagram, so I'll let you take that one. Uh, yeah, lifting the puck on the backhand, number one thing is you need the puck to generate speed. So usually you start on your forehand, you gotta pull the puck with speed towards the blade, and then the blade has to meet the, the puck as they're moving together. What happens there is you're able to get under the puck, lift the puck up without the puck going too far. So the fact that the puck is going with speed and meeting the blade means you're going to be able to elevate it, but it's also going to oppose uh, the force that the stick's putting on the puck so that you can lift it and not lift it too far. When that when the blade is contacting the puck, are you doing anything like a, a quick snap, any wrist movement yeah, going on there? Yeah, you, you definitely, number one, you got to get your top hand low to create that little uh, ramp so that you're able to get under the puck, uh, and then you're kind of meeting and, and flicking the wrist as you uh, di dig under the puck. Yeah, I, I found that for the lift, it's like getting just that, that little motion, it yeah. just it adds that extra bit of a snap. And yeah, get very subtle, action. but yeah, it's a difference maker for sure. When's your next sale? Um, Adam Hockey 42, how long have you been playing hockey? Uh, for me, it's been 25 years. Nice. I, I've been playing since I was, I guess, two or three years old. I, I can't actually remember when I started. Uh, we had a pond on the farm, so I started. I learned how to skate there. Um, I'd estimate three years old. I'm thir turning 33 pretty soon, so about 30 years old. I win. <laughs> by default. <laughs> Sarah asks, what's a good stick for a beginner player? Great question. Uh, for a true beginner, any stick. I mean, get, get something, it, you don't have to spend too much money because you're going to develop some personal preference as time goes on. So I wouldn't recommend spending a lot of money on your very first stick. Just get something, play around with it, a wood stick just to get started. And then, you know, if you really love the game, if, you, if you're if you really putting a lot of time into uh, shooting stick handling, that's when you go and start, you know, walk down the stick aisle, play with some sticks. Oh, I kind of like the flex, the feel of this one, different curve patterns. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, if you have friends, you can always, oh, let me take a few shots with that. Oh yeah, I like this. You know, you find your personal preference as time goes on. I would get a Zidane Charo 150 flex and just cut it down. <laughs> so it's about 200 flex once. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you're good. You're good after that. Cole Schoen asks, what's the best way to get around a defender and get to the net? Want me to hop on that one first? Yeah, go for it. Though. All right, best way to get around a defender, number one, speed. If you have a speed differential, so more speed than the defenseman, you're pretty set. Um, if you have a lot more speed, the guy's caught standing still, the guy's lunging at you, pretty much all you need is one quick sidestep, a little separation with the puck, and you're good. Uh, if the defender is matching your speed, then we'll, we'll go to part with Pav for that one. Yeah, I mean, he's right. Speed's always your number one thing, and every kind of advantage you make is going to be emphasized uh, if you have more speed. So every dangle you do is going to be more effective. Uh, in terms of manipulation, uh, you always want to threaten whether you're 
you're going to be dangerous wide, whether you're going left or right, to turn a defender's uh, feet, turn a stick, and shift his weight. So you got to think about your body language, how you're presenting yourself. You really have to make it look like you're going to go that way, and it can't just be all hands. Your body has to contribute to the fake uh, as long as the footwork. Owen Anderson asks, what is the best drill to improve shot power? Uh, so to start, just shooting on a regular basis is going to improve your shot power. One, because your technique, you'll, you'll naturally uh, improve your technique, especially for the uh, players that aren't that great. Uh, just shooting the puck is going to help. Uh, if you can get some feedback on your shot, then that's going to help as well if you have a coach that can uh, look at the video. Also, the, the second level of that is when you're shooting, you're working the muscles. And the more you shoot, the more you're working those muscles. So that's like for the beginner levels, if you have anything else to add on to that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it depends on what age you are. Uh, I think at the younger ages, I always get kids to use those blue pucks because they go through the proper uh, technique without cutting corners because everyone wants to lift the black pucks and they're too weak to do it and they end up digging under the puck or going through improper form which doesn't help them build the skill into the proper form uh, when they do get strength so using the proper puck uh, is good when you're at a an adult level where you're strong enough using those orange pucks can help uh, just using weighted pucks that are about eight ounces uh, to shoot uh, but then the number one thing is always uh, video analysis being able to look at your form see whether you are putting flex on the stick what do you need to do differently in your form uh, to correct that? There's always a push-pull system with your hands. Whenever we're shooting, uh, you got to look at the timing and just review the uh, slow motion and see if you're doing something right. And if you're not, just make the small tweak, go at it again, and just keep reviewing and shoot a lot of pucks like Jeremy said. Yeah, technique is huge. Your technique is going to count for, I'd say, a lot of your power. Once you get that technique down, that's when you can start building that strength, and then that will really take you up to the next level. Lee, bud. Oh, hey, thanks for the coffee. Nope. Let's hop into Twitter. We got some questions coming in here. Gibbs says, uh, when do we get to see an instructional video from both of us together at the same time? We've done one. We have done one. But we can do another one. We'll, we'll do some more. We actually, we- In fact, we have. We have. We shot a few, uh, a few months ago, Lots. so they should be coming uh, into your news feed at some point. You'll get him, Gibby. Okay. Matt Malak. Malak? We'll say Matt. 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 Why are you the way that you are? Honestly. Matt says, how to make fundamental drills exciting for kids. My son loves to play hockey, but when it comes to drills without the puck, he dislikes them. And I answered you on uh, Twitter already <laughs> on that, but I'll say it again. For the video. For the people watching. For the people. Um, you always got to find a way to make it fun. I've found in my experience, especially with younger kids, timing them makes it really exciting because they love challenging themselves and they're always rushing to me saying, what was my time, what was my last time? And that way you don't have to tell them to push themselves. They're having fun uh, and they're not thinking about training. Uh, the second is to film them because kids love watching themselves uh, getting filmed. And then you can point out little things to them as well uh, when you see them uh, to help them get better. To build on that idea of uh, timing them, I think what's really pushing them is to compete. Kids love to compete. They want uh, some sort of competition. So if you can do that, fine anyway, because uh, maybe he's sh uh, practicing at home, uh, how many times can you hit the top right side? Because then it's not just a shooting drill, it's, it's a challenge, right? How many times can you do it? Uh, if you have people, if you're out on the ice, you know, races, great way, like the obstacle course, right? Absolutely. Set the obstacle courses up, get them to race you'll see kids go harder than they would ever go if you just said skate as fast as you can. You put those races there, they're going. Because it's, it's for a reason, right? Give them a reason. Absolutely. Even simple stuff like crossovers. Uh, I was on the ice with Jim Vitale a while back and trying to get the kids to do backwards crossovers. It was going okay. Some were trying it, some weren't really. The second he said, count how many backwards crossovers you can do in a row, these kids Oh, I did six, coach. I did eight. I did nine. I did ten. So excited. Let's do it again. Just by adding that one little thing. Yeah. So, yeah, give him, give him something to work for. Matt says thanks. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> Martin says tips on shooting whilst skating at a top speed. Okay, that's a great question. Uh, I would start at a slow speed, especially if you're just starting, and you got to start by practicing shooting off both legs. You never want to rush into it. You want to skate at a very slow speed. What I get people to do is actually skate glide on two feet 
and then hold, 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 and then shoot off one foot. Once you get comfortable with one foot, then you take one stride and then shoot off one foot. Then you take two strides, then shoot off two feet, and just going, uh, trust the process and go that way. I like that. It's, uh, you know, get the fundamentals first, and, and once you have that, you understand where everything feels nice, then you just, you know, increase the speed. Uh, something that I like to teach is the sweet spot, where the puck is released from. I think when you're going really quick, that puck might be coming outside of your sweet spot. It might be a little too far to the outside, a little too far in front of you, and you're trying to rush that shot off, not releasing it from that sweet spot, maybe it's a little too far back. So understand where that sweet spot is, where you like to release it when you're stationary, you're just going slower. Try to keep it in that sweet spot when you're at a faster speed, that might help a little as well. Tim says, how do you get that snap in a snapshot? For this one, it's about getting the hands away from the body, uh, get that leverage from the stick. The top hand has to come out and you're pulling back with that top hand, pushing with the bottom hand. I find that's the biggest thing for that nice snap. Uh, there's a few other ways to do it. Uh, two touch shot where you pull the puck in a little bit, the puck is actually coming off the blade of the stick and then you're snapping, pulling with that top hand, pushing with the bottom hand, getting that nice snap at the end. But really important to finish with that good snap and I do have a YouTube video for that. Uh, anything to add to that? No, I think uh, it depends where you are, but just like Jeremy said, you want to create separation from the blade to the puck if you're not there yet and you're only comfortable with a wrist shot. Practice just having the blade off the puck and then meeting it in a snapshot. And then you can transfer that to having the puck on the blade, separate, and then snapping. Just go in that order, you'll uh, learn it faster, I think. Now, the guys that usually don't have that nice snap, they're, they're using most of their bottom hand or they're not really changing the tempo in their shot. It's the same throughout. Uh, so the video I was talking about, it's how to finish your shot. Um, and it just talks about that last little piece to your shot, which is that nice snap. So check that one out. Should help you out, Tim. Oh, Rebel6 says, how do you hit and receive one? So, Pat, if you want to stand right here, I'll just come flying in and <laughs> hit check. Yeah, I can tell you how to receive a hit, but I've, I don't think I've ever thrown a hit in my entire life. Yeah, so. it's been a good 15 years since mm -hmm. I've thrown a good hit. WSP says, average Joes can get golf swing help from a local expert. Where slash how can an average Joe get local hockey shooting help? Well, there are shooting coaches. Um, I know of a couple. There's Tim Turk. Uh, there is Shoot to Score. I love Shoot to Score's uh, stuff. He does some very good stuff. Um, but uh, I'm not sure where you are <laughs> when you say local. <laughs> so I'm not sure about that, but uh, be on the lookout. There are some shooting coaches. It is quite rare. Same with like stick handling specialists. It is a, a rare thing. It's up and coming. So. Uh, you might just have to go to uh, an overall like hockey, uh, hockey skills guy, um, but uh, do some research. You might have to get on a plane. <laughs> I think for the local level, if, if you're a true beginner, you go out to pick up hockey, you go out to some uh, stick and puck as they call in the States, and just let the guys on the bench know that you're working on your shot. There's probably a couple guys that'll come and just give you a few pointers. Uh, it might not be super detailed, but it could be something that uh, can help you out. If you're looking for more of a specialist in shooting versus a, a buddy at Stick and Puck, there are guys who offer online help, so you can get a video of yourself shooting, you can send it into them, and they'll do a video, video analysis, they'll break it down and send it back to you. Uh, I think Tim Turk does offer that, and there's probably a few more if you search for it. Uh, so that, that could be something to hold you over until you hop on a plane and visit an expert. Next up, we've got Kev. He says, I'm a 37-year-old guy with a beer belly and very average athletic ability. <laughs> oh, Kev, you're on my hockey team. Uh, I want to play hockey, what should I do? Uh, yeah, I also answered this already. Uh, gotcha. I think the beer belly thing is quite irrelevant, especially in beer league. But any skill level, any age, uh, any belly size, there's a league for you. There's a team you could play on. Uh, you know, you should always play hockey if you want to play hockey. Uh, so find a league, find a team, do some research, uh, find one, get on the ice, and uh, just enjoy the game. Add a little more to that, you know, call your lo local ranks and see what's available. Uh, the bigger centers, the cities, you're going to have a, an F league, an E league, a D league, a C league. So like, like Pav said, there's a spot for you. Smaller centers, not really the case. Sometimes there's just A league and it may be hard to get into, but there's usually something. There's guys that rent the ice, there's open hockey. So yeah, just get out there, start playing, meet some people. And if they like you, they'll invite you on the team. You're good to go. Bring beer. That will help them in the liking side of things, yeah. Hey guys, question for Pavel. When doing basic wide side to side stick handling, my son often loses the puck on the backhand side. Is it most difficult likely to like shift in the weight in the hands and the properly hoping you can help in this camp in summer next build? Well, we read that fast. 
<laughs> Do you want to actually go into that one? I need to see a video. So. Yeah. Will How to Hockey ever come to South Africa? Book my ticket. Book my ticket. Get me a plane, send it over. I'm coming. I think. Oh, we, we did. didn't. Uh, okay. Not yet. Uh, quiet. On the set, please. Quiet on the set. That's it. Center security. French Slugger, who is your all-time favorite player in the show? Uh, for me right now, it's Barzell. Uh, I was really into him when he was playing the World Juniors. Um, was he was impressive. Very impressive. Very confident with the puck. You know, he'd be last man back going through guys on the point. I thought he was very effective. Uh, obviously, his speed is very good, but his stick handling as well, his playmaking abilities. And the season he had with the Islanders uh, didn't surprise me. Uh, the guys just got all the tools, and uh, I really love watching that guy play. I think we should do past and present, so I'll go with a, a current player. I'm gonna take the easy way out and say Connor McDavid. Oh, one second, I got a call coming in, guys. Yeah, it's McDavid. I'm uh, gonna go the easy way out, Connor McDavid. Before McDavid came in the league, <sighs> hello, from where? Yeah, sorry, I don't have time to talk right now. Okay, bye. Before McDavid got in the league, I hadn't really seen any player that played the style of hockey that he plays, and since then, I'd say Barzell is the closest with the, the lateral movement, the creativity, the movement of the puck, and, and the skating. That's where it, he really sets me apart is uh, he's not just fast in a straight line. His lateral movement, his edge work, very deceptive uh, player. So I think he's a guy that has it all. Going to past players, favorite player when I was growing up was Pavel Bure. Explosive goal scorer, the speed, creativity. He, he sort of played unlike any other player. I got to go back to my past because I can't leave this out. Datsuk, uh, I was obsessed with him. He's kind of the reason I started down this venture and learned a lot about stick handling from him and him creating new stuff every every game and uh, you know just being able to, to learn every day watching a player who's making up different moves, finding different ways to manipulate defenders, especially from a guy who came in uh, way deep in the draft and became uh, what the NHL players called the hardest player to take the puck off of. Uh, it, was, it was really fun to watch his career uh, and learn from him. So Datsuk, the GOAT. Great choice. What a guy. Great pick. Got a question coming in. Who has the best moves, Barber or Barkov? <laughs> uh, am I am I allowed to answer this? Or? Yeah, I think you have to. It's... Oh, jeez. Okay, it's hard to compare when you got a guy who's doing these moves in the NHL against elite goalies, and I'm doing against random goalies all the time. Uh, you know, he's he's obviously pulled off some create creative moves in the NHL at a ridiculously high percentage, but I think there's definitely some moves I could show him. Uh, and if he wants to accept my challenge, I will do a shootout competition against you, Barkov. Uh, it would be an honor for me to do that. So uh, if you want to accept the challenge, I'll hop on a plane and fly to Florida. Uh, anytime, any place, uh, I'll do that. So I'd love to. There. I'd love to see that. <laughs> Honestly, I, that would be amazing. I, I doubt it. I think happen. it has to happen. Let's do it, bud. Come on, Barkov. Pucks in your rink now. Let's go. We're waiting on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Barkov, fell for it. Oh, Barber. That was easy. Pucks in your ring. <laughs> Jeremy Rubke. <laughs> I was gonna say balls in your court, and at the last second, like pucks in your court, ring. Okay. Where is it? Downtown? Yeah. yeah. Well, we can give you a ride. Okay. Um, no, we, uh, I'll walk. Get him to Uber. <laughs> I want to listen to my new music loud. All right, uh, 5 30, Pav, I think that's almost your bedtime. So <laughs> we, we gotta wrap this up. He gets funnier, right? Eh? <laughs> gets funny. So that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for all the people who sent in your comments. Really enjoyed answering them. I uh, hope to do this again sometime and uh, also big thanks to Hockey Shop for having us out here and hosting. If you want to see more from Hockey Shop, you want to grab some of their products, check out the website hockeyshop.com. Uh, if you want to see more of this guy, and you should because pretty amazing hands. Hey, thanks, bud. Yeah, no problem. Where can they find you? Uh, at Hey Barber on Instagram. And if you're looking for more stuff from me, uh, Coach Jeremy on YouTube or at How to Hockey on Instagram, Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching the videos, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, right. Gang signs. Oh, yeah. It's uh, 5.30, it's uh, almost past bedtime, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, dude. <laughs> Go with that, that was great. All right. It's almost past bedtime, so we gotta past call it. it. It's past his bedtime.